are coming live from Occupy City Hall. Live from Occupy City Hall. Uh, that's the uh, white white people out drunk. White people still out drunk. Alert, alert! White people still out drunk. This is gonna go on all the way into Monday. I can guarantee you that. All right, trying to get these mic levels right. There we go. We got the mic levels good. All right, we down here, Occupy City Hall. I think that we, uh, in the the one of the things that we have learned in these last, this is basically the twelve. This is, this is the also the tw the anniversary of the May thirtieth alliance, organizationally as well in a way. Uh, the first week of protest and what that we did as an organization took place. Uh, the week of July 4th, the week leading up into into July 4th, first city market was the day before July 4th. Uh, last year, 4th of July, we went to Rivet Stadium and then we participated in a demonstrate a, pro a noise demo that the uh, RYA put together. Here come the police. This the police again. Oh no, that's not the police. <laughs> I just seen the lights. My fault. I just seen the lights. <laughs> uh, uh, but so we. Uh, so it's been a year of the existence of the May 30th Alliance, and from last year, uh, May, uh, excuse me, last year July 4th to this year July 4th, it's a guarantee, it's a hundred percent fact that the 4th of July is going to always be uh, a day of strong attention, a uh, day of strong contention uh, between people who are against racism, people who are against white nationalism, people who are against the false ideology of white supremacy. Uh, People that that's going to always be a day of contention for us uh, with these people who support these uh, notions, these people who support these ideas. Uh, I think that I think that we uh, are accomplishing what it is that we are out here trying to do. Uh, uh, it's one of those things where it's not uh, manifested to you every day. There's no financial gain uh, for us to be able to track how uh, well we are doing or how much we are accomplishing or how close we are getting to our objective or goal. There's no uh, season marker of games or uh, a finish uh, time on the scoreboard or anything like that. Uh, it's something that is never ending. Uh, it's the uh, definition of what it means to struggle. It's continuous, uh, but we are making strides. Uh, so uh, 12 months, to, to look back on the last 12 months of the uh, organization and the things that have uh, the things that have been altered in the community in these last in these 12 months and uh, what I do believe can be altered in the 12 months to come uh, so I think that uh, we've we've you know we made steps but we got uh, a lot more steps to uh, a lot more steps to make uh, so uh, I don't know uh, rabbit did you get to get a chance to hop on in Talk it all about the your July Fourth experience. No, I did not. Here we'll let uh, here we'll have you. We're gonna let we're gonna have Rapid talk about his July Fourth experience. Nah, you good. Uh, how how am I sounding? Uh, all right. Um, the first thing I wanted to say about my July Fourth experience was that. When the parade, be, when the parade uh, parade began and everybody immediately started cheering, I kind of just one got kind of a sensory overload from my autism as well. But like particularly the reason why everybody was celebrating was just like you're celebrating colonialism, you're cel celebrating white nationalism, and then once the po like once the police were coming around, I noticed how they were like no matter like at, even at different even though we were all at different points on the parade route. There were some, there was always groups cheering for the police, and it was just and then as uh, as Leslie said earlier, is the fact that uh, when a group of uh, when a group of black children participating in the parade, they would, which was definitely just kind of a pick their uh, kind of like a pick and choose of like who they're choosing to uh, support in the parade, uh, who who they're going to support in the parade as well, and then just. Uh, the fact that more most of the people were just concerned about how they are uh, about concerned about one the sign just the signs being out and just the language that was being used like oh there are children around it's like well maybe these children maybe these children we're gonna start asking you questions that have those conversations you know 
Uh, I really, I would say that's really all that my uh, my Fourth of July experience is uh, is gonna is is about. So. And, you know, I don't, uh, uh, I'm not in a position in which I don't, uh, I'm uh, totally unempathetic uh, towards people who uh, say they have children or they're with their kids and they don't want their kids to hear certain words or see certain words. Uh, you know, I, I think that, that as a parent, that is something that you have the uh, right to feel. You have the right to want to shield your children from certain things or for them to not see certain things. Uh, but that's something that you relinquish when you come out uh, into public, into uh, into the real world. Uh, if somebody uh, would, wants to exercise their freedom of speech and cuss out in public, uh, they're not wrong for cussing out in public because you happen to have your children. Uh, that's not how freedom works. That's not how freedom of speech works. It's not you have freedom of speech unless uh, uh, children are out. Uh, and again, nobody is nobody's cussing at people's children. Uh, nobody is out uh, just cussing just to cuss or just using this language just to use this language. Uh, there's a, a message behind all of these things. There's explanations behind all of these things. Uh, the true issue is that people just don't like the explanations. <clears throat> they just don't like the reasonings. <clears throat> and a lot of the times, excuse me, <clears throat> a lot of the times re people don't like the explanations and the reasonings because they're racist, because they have uh, these prejudices, because uh, they have these uh, unresolved uh, uh, ideologies or uh, unresolved pieces of ideologies from uh, their grandfather or great grandfather or uh, older generations of their family uh, that are hinged on racism. And instead of actually taking the time to uh, uh, to look inwardly and deal with those things, they rather just uh, strike outwardly against uh, the people that are uh, uh, stirring that issue up in their conscience. Uh, instead of uh, dealing with uh, why you why people are writing "fuck the police," instead of taking the time to understand. Uh, why the nature of the issue is of such a heavy, uh, such a heavy gravity that on the 4th of July people are doing these things uh, instead of trying to do that, which would be the hard work, which is looking inward. Uh, people just want to lash out and yell at people for cussing and yell at people for using a language that's different than theirs. Uh, and again, this uh, uh, nobody is going inside people's homes and cussing people out inside their homes. Nobody's going inside people's homes and writing uh, cuss words on the walls of people's homes. Uh, these things are being written on public streets, on free streets. Uh, and what is happening is that <clears throat> uh, uh, the state's attorney, uh, the mayor, these different entities in the city, uh, they see the, the, the makings of a movement. They see the makings of a prolonged struggle. They see the makings of uh, of something that is not can't just be done away with uh, with uh, in six months or in 12 months. Uh, and so we're dealing with uh, the actions which come with that. Uh, and so as we sit here on the 4th of July, we have to wonder if warrants will be put out for people for protesting, if warrants will be put out for people for exercising their freedom of speech, if warrants will be put out for people uh, for uh actions that took place today not because anybody has done anything illegal but because a precedent has been set that uh legal activities can get you uh arrested and uh set with charges in the city of rockford illinois and in winnebago county <clears throat> uh we also sit here and this is something that we've had a chance to speak about as often as i would like but uh uh they've pushed back the findings of uh they pushed back the findings of the Winnebago Boone Integrity Task Force. All right, y'all. Bye. Bye. Love y'all. Be safe. Appreciate y'all. <clears throat> uh, for sure, for sure. Uh, they pushed out the uh, findings of the Winnebago Boone Integrity Task Force until uh, August. Uh, I think that, uh, they've pushed back the releasing of any information until August. Uh, the state's attorney, Jay Hanley, when he came into, uh, into office, 
and the shootings happened about you know three months, three four months into his uh, administration's uh, time in office. He he got up and did a press conference, and in the press conference said he said every two weeks he would hold a press conference and give information to the community uh, and transparency to the community about these shootings that took place. Uh, after two press conferences, <clears throat> excuse me, after two press conferences. There was no more press conferences. Uh, there has not been a press conference since. Uh, we sit here uh, waiting for August to come, and it was not a press conference to let us know that the findings would be delayed. Uh, and we have to sit and wonder if the press conference that's supposed to be uh, come in August will even come in August because Jay Hanley is obviously not a man of his word. Uh, and the, the Hanley administration is also is obviously uh, not an administration that's going to operate on integrity, uh, honesty, or any type of decency. Uh, so we have to have that understanding as we uh, begin, as we continue uh, with this struggle. This struggle began with Marilyn High Ross in office, who was a Democratic pawn. Uh, and now we have uh, Jay Hanley in office, who uh, is less of a, a pawn as a Republican uh, and more of a rook piece, uh, shall you say. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, we have to understand uh, how this rook moves and the nature in which this rook is going to move uh, because Jay Hanley is just a small cog in the machine. Uh, Jay Hanley is just a small chapter in this story. Uh, the same way that Tom Mac... What the fuck is this? Street cleaners. Oh, uh, they got it. They got it. Uh, they, got, they got the street sweepers out. They got the street sweepers out. They got the street sweepers out. Ugh. Notice how it doesn't do shit to the chalk. Yeah, it's not doing nothing to the chalk. Yeah. They gonna need some water for that chalk. They got they, the street. This is like the fourth they got the street sweepers by. out. Uh, what's up, Kay? You wanted to uh, say something? Yeah, wanted to speak? Kay. You, Kay wasn't. Kay didn't get a chance no, to be down here yeah. for uh, for the fourth uh, parade that happened earlier. But he was down here for some of the uh, events that took place in the evening and had some interactions with uh, some of the. Uh, white nationalists and some of the people celebrating this white nationalist holiday in the evening. Uh, so we'll uh, let Kay hop in here and uh, speak about uh, some of his experiences. Yeah, finna head out, rabbit. Finna head out. Yeah. All right, rabbit. I'm gonna holla at you, brother. Peace and love. Love you, brother. Love you too. Y'all stay safe. Y'all stay blessed. You know, I'm gonna be in tune with you, bro. All right. Thank you, Leslie. <clears throat> Thank you, Leslie. Again, this is Kay. I've been with the movement since day one. Again, my my allegiance to this cause is because I believe in justice, inequality. Uh, the extent of this is still simply this. I stand firmly against police uh, brutality, excessive force, and racial profiling. Now, I wanted to speak on specifics as to why I don't support the holiday of the 4th of July. I'm going to wait for this truck to go by. We had, we had a couple of street sweepers to go by. Uh, it's simply put, I wanted to... I thought about this earlier today, uh, just reflecting on the 4th of July and what it means for some, but not for all. It's not an all-inclusive holiday. Uh, the reasons why I firmly stand against celebrating the 4th of July are simply this. 246 years of slavery from 1619 to 1865. 99 years of Jim Crow laws. 18... 65 to 1964, 86 years of lynching, 1882 to 1986. I believe it's well after 1986 as far as a point of reference. 14 years of fighting for civil rights, 1954 to 1968. Over 400 years of oppression, 19, 1619 to current day. And then when I thought about current day, I was thinking about last year, how black Americans all over this nation and sympathizers all over the world when, when black people said our lives matter America's response was no it doesn't 
That's literally how the nation responded because you have all these nation, uh, all these states now filing uh, anti-protest laws like Florida and other states. They have a provision in Florida where you can hit somebody with a truck that's protesting and you won't go to jail for attempted murder. So the nation collectively as a whole is showing black Americans that it's diametrically opposed to equality for us in any sense of the word. It is standing against us as a people. And you think as a phrase as simple as my life matters, black lives matter as a phrase would be simply understood, but it's easy to see as a nation, America's not listening. And I, I digress, but I, I wanted to say that just in regards to my personal take on the fourth, that that's the reason why I want people to understand specifically why I do not acknowledge it or celebrate it because I'm not going to celebrate a day that that was literally America's turning point where America could have truly said because of the documentation in black and white where it says all men are created equal. That was America's moment in history to live by the words that it was it was establishing as a nation in its national identity. But America chose otherwise, and it has fought to maintain two different Americas for two different people. So I have no there's no there's no love lost for the fourth of july for me personally now i say all that to say this as far as my experience down here even on this evening uh there was a gentleman and i use that loosely but there was a gentleman who he walks into the street now this is not a this is a not a not a one-off thing it's just i want to use this as an example so he feels emboldened to literally walk up to the scene and we have a portable speaker Nobody was talking to him. No one asked him to come over. No one asked him to speak. But he felt fully, he felt fully emboldened to literally grab the speaker, pick it up, and proceeded to take a step. Now, me standing there, I'm thinking, I don't know if he's going to try to smash it. I don't know what his intentions are. All I do know is it's a blatant disrespect to a group that you see doing something that you just start touching their their items you have no you, you're in their space and that's literally how i took it i took offense to it because you are coming into someone else's space and then you're 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 presenting yourself as superior because you never asked anyone if it was okay you never asked anyone if you were welcome you just took it upon yourself to just start making moves as if you're in charge so I took it upon myself to walk up to him, and I literally took the speaker out of his hands. So I matched energy for energy. I didn't ask him for it back. I took it back from him, and I just looked him in his eyes like, well, you set the precedent. You think you're going to come over here and just do what you think you want to do. I don't know if you're a friend or foe, and I, at this point, I don't care because your actions are showing me that you're definitely not a friend of the movement. So he and I just stood there with our eyes locked, and I could see it within him. He's trying to victimize the victims. And that's when he spoke and said, we need peace. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, OK, but we are not the aggressors. So you're, you're, you're fighters with the wrong people. And that's what I told him. I said, you, you, you're talking about peace, peace. You're talking to those that have been victimized. So what are you trying to gain from focusing on the group that's here, the group that's at City Hall? What do you hope to gain? And one of the things that one of the things I also add to that is that one of the a lot of the reasons that people feel emboldened for some to uh, take some of these actions is because of the vilifying of the protest and of the of protesters and of the demonstrations and of demonstrators uh, and of activists that has gone on in the city. There has been a smear campaign uh, from multiple angles. Uh, these last couple of months uh, almost seems at some points that these smear campaigns have been coordinated. Uh, and But we uh, one of the things that uh, I think people should also understand is that uh, the, the, the nature and the makeup of this organization and the people of this organization is of such uh, that people will not break under false ac accusations and false allegations and uh, people using terminology like clout chasing or uh, trying to be Internet famous. 
uh, it should be understood again that uh, the videos that we took today at the protest, at the demonstration at the 4th of July, uh, was not clout chasing. It's not to be famous. Uh, it's to expose the truth of America. Uh, the fact of the matter is anybody who is celebrating the 4th of July today, uh, anybody who is uh, new outfits and barbecuing and grilling, uh, they are buying into institutional racism. They are buying into institutional uh, uh, oppression, institutional exploitation, because that is what this holiday represents. Uh, it, it, when that uh, when this holiday, when this uh, paper was signed, it wasn't no fit. It wasn't 50 states. Was it 30 states? Uh, when this paper was signed, it was uh, when these papers and this documentation was signed. Uh, they didn't. It didn't enable rights for women. Right. Uh, it did not enable rights for anybody of color. Uh, and so, uh, at the same time that it was happening, a genocide, uh, one of the, uh, the one of the worst genocides in the history of mankind, was taking place with the indigenous peoples of this land. And so the same way I believe when Thanksgiving comes uh, or when the Thursday, the last Thursday in November comes, uh, if it's a, a parade and marches, people should demonstrate against that. All of these false holidays uh, have to be demonstrated against because they perpetuate white nationalism. They perpetuate the false ideology of white supremacy. Uh, they, they perpetuate racism and oppression and exploitation. And it's not going to be easy to get change. It's not going to be easy to uh, uh, have people look at these uh, these institutions differently. Uh, but <clears throat> it's something very something very telling about our society that uh, when the fi when the fireworks go off in the sky, everybody stop what they do and watch with the fireworks. Black, white, uh, 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 Hispanic. Uh, Asian, uh, Middle Eastern, everybody stops and watch the fireworks. And uh, people don't stop and watch those fireworks because all of a sudden they're closer as a community or be, all of a sudden they're, they're closer as individuals and they're more collective. Uh, it's institutionalization that makes them stop and watch the fireworks. Uh, uh, it's... it's it's, uh, it's, the, it's the psychological nature. It's the, it's the psychological nature of, of white nationalism that makes them stop and watch the fireworks. It's programmed into people to stop and watch the fireworks. Uh, and the fireworks is just one layer of the propaganda from this day. Uh, the parade is the, another layer of the propaganda. People come out here and just sit and watch the parade. Don't even have no idea why they're watching the parade. Don't have no idea about the 4th of July. Don't have no idea about uh, the racism and bigotry that the, uh, these so-called founding fathers espoused throughout their lifetimes or the hypocrisies that they lived their life with. Uh, no idea. They're just doing it off of programming. Uh, and, it's, and it is our job as an organization through direct action uh, through uh, creating dialogue, through, <clears throat> we uh, through direct action, we create dialogue. We have done enough direct actions in the last 12 months for us to have a continuous dialogue on all of our platforms. So that is what we are doing uh, through that direct action uh, and that dialogue coming about. Uh, those are the things uh, that lead to challenging the system. Those are the things that lead to uh, challenging the robotic nature uh, of the of the society. You want to pull up a chair, bro? Want to pull a chair up? Okay, uh, th those are the things that uh, uh, lead. Those are the things that lead to people just uh, robotically doing certain. Uh, th excuse me. We we are uh, having these dialogues, having these direct actions to disrupt people just robotically doing these actions without uh, thinking about them, without second guessing them. Uh, when people come to City Market, they should be thinking about where the dollar they're spending at City Market goes. They should be thinking about uh, who the people who run City Market. They should be thinking about the past actions of City Market every time that they go there. Uh, when people uh, come out and they go to these for the Memorial Day Parade or the Fourth of July Parade, they should be challenged to think about what it is that America truly represents. When they have Uncle Sam on the back of these Jeeps, people should be challenged to think about what Uncle Sam truly represents when police officers who have uh, shot at uh, civilians in the streets 
killed civilians in the streets are marching down in a parade and smiling and waving at children. You have to uh, force people to think about what those things truly mean, the type of connotation that those things truly have when uh, the, the, uh, <clears throat> we live in a community that refuses to truthfully address racism. We have a mayor who refuses to truthfully address racism. We have an NAACP that refuses to address racism. We have uh, uh, churches in this, in this city that because they are profiting from uh, the city or profiting from uh, uh, the state in some type of a way uh, or politically uh, advantageous to be quiet, they are being quiet and refusing uh, to address racism. And so many people come to me and want to have the conversation of what do we do next? How do we fix these things? How do we solve these things? And the truth of the matter is that is trying to put uh, the cart before the horse. You are not going to be, there's nothing, there is not a single issue around race that Rockford is ready to solve now or probably in the next five years because that's how long it will take to, uh, to address it before you can solve it. That's how long it will take to find out how deeply rooted it is. We have have to start speaking about uh, the miseducation of the school system, addressing it, making sure every child that grows up in this city knows about the history of the miseducation of the school system. And then we have to find out how many households have been uh, destroyed and decimated because of that miseducation. And then we have to find a way uh, to do restorations for those families. Uh, then you have to do that same thing for mass incarceration. You have to do those same things for police terrorism. You have to do those things, same things for discrimination and employment. Uh, there is a list of things that has to be addressed uh, and, at, and, and truthfully, genuinely addressed before we can even go about taking the steps uh, to, to solve these things and to solve these issues. And one of the, pri and the, 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 one of the primary things that has to be addressed are the holidays that are celebrated. One of the primary things that has to be addressed is uh, the white nationalism that's uh, uh, shrouded in religion. Uh, when you go into these churches, is Jesus white, Mary white, uh, the babies is white, uh, the 12 disciples is white. Uh, all of these things which are uh, false and go against uh, uh, history. Uh, these holidays that have been uh, uh, whitewashed. Uh, these holidays that have been Americanized, uh, these traditions that are built into the fabric of this country, uh, which these traditions are built in. These traditions were created uh, by racist men. These, these traditions were created by bigoted men. Uh, these traditions were created in an effort to uphold the status quo. These traditions were created in an effort to institutionalize the society and institutionalize individuals so that they did not question the reality in which that they they lived in uh, and we are in a place now where as black people specifically we cannot afford to not question the reality in which we live in because not questioning it is going to lead to it not existing anymore and so here I'm gonna so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna let Kay hop in here uh, and chime in on some things but again I just wanted to uh, to sort of dive in uh, on a few of those uh, specific topics right there. I'm a, like I said, I'm going to let Kay hop in here, and then I'm gonna, I'll hop back in a second. I just wanted, wanted to add to one of the points that you made. The black community in Rockford, they, they, now is not the time for you to cheer because you've received no social gain, no political gain, and no economic gain. You've lost on all three major fronts for revitalization and infrastructure development on a social level and on an economic level that there is no we've lost on all three levels and when I say that lost because there's no there is no coordinated effort for the gain so to cheer now or to say that you've arrived or we've received something tangible is a falsehood on a social level economic level and a political level. We have no leverage as a society. There is no major infrastructure dollars coming to the black community because we don't have a collective cohesive black agenda in Rockford. So for anyone to pander to the political establishment for acceptance, is it's empty, it's powerless and it's meaningless because as long as there's no cohesiveness and a cohesive voice in a, in a statement establishing the support of the entire 
that has the whole black uh, uh, social atmosphere in Rockford, that it's speaking on behalf of all in an inclusive manner, there is no win. So for me to look at the last year of, of events, for anyone that feels like what we're doing is wrong, question the fact that you're not doing anything. Question that. For those questioning... Well, how can what you do possibly make in, be making a difference? Believe me, what we're doing is because we have a voice, we have a platform, and we we are we are disrupting the status quo. So, everything that comes along with it, it comes with the territory. But for so many people to say what we're doing wrong or we're going about it the wrong way, nine times out of ten, the people saying this the loudest aren't doing anything. They're not doing anything. They don't have a voice of their own. They don't have a platform of their own. And they figure if I, I align myself with the political status quo, maybe I'll be accepted. White supremacy, and I think I've said this on every live, but I, I don't think this community understands, the black community here really understands the depth of the psychology of this. White supremacy was never created, it was never invented to uplift the white society. White supremacy was created to give an unfair advantage to whites by suppressing, by suppressing all non-white groups that it encounters. It, it was never structured to uplift the white community because when you look at it on a social level, on an economic level, on a political level, there is no uplifting. It is all focused on suppression. You, you suppress the vote for black people. You suppress, suppress the right to be... I mean, black people had to had to fight for the uniqueness of human rights to be, first say, hey, before I get civil rights and have you treat me with some civility, can I first be acknowledged as a human being? We had to get human rights first, then civil rights. We we need to get this collectively. It's not enough to be accepted by white society. That's not what we need to go for. That's not even that shouldn't even be the goal of the focus, whether it's Rockford or on a national level. That's not our identity. My identity as a black man in America, uh, as as as, as a, a, a black man in America, my goal is not to be accepted by white society. My goal is to be accepted as who I am and accepted and acknowledged and received as equal. And that's where the pushback is. So if that's not a person's goal, and I'll, I'll hand this right back to Leslie, if that's not the goal, then you, you're, you're fighting on the wrong front because acceptance is not equality. It's not the same. You can be accepted by the, the most staunch racist but still not be seen or deemed as equal because he's making the conscious choice to decide if that's a place for you or not. You cannot exist in, a, in an environment of white supremacy which states specifically, I am above every non-white group. And then say, but please, can I be equal? Because white supremacy does not exist on the same plane as equality for all non-white people. That's why it's called white supremacy. So anything that you feel that you need, you have to take it. Last few people still trickling out of the bars. Last few people trickling out of the bars. Uh, people have Monday off, so people are going to still continue to get drunk throughout the night, continue to celebrate this white nationalist holiday, continue to celebrate white nationalism, uh, continue to celebrate Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson, who was a slaveholder, raped his slaves. Uh, he going to run this light. I thought he was going to run the light. I should have I should have put it on him. He probably still is going to run it. He probably still going to run it. <laughs> Uh, but again, the main thing that I would also do is uh, uh, encourage people to go back and watch these videos. It's a little bit later in the night, so we're gonna uh, we are, we'll wrap this live up and do another live tomorrow and some li a lot of lives. Try a lot of lives. I'll try to do multiple lives uh, tomorrow in the daytime and uh, speak on some of these things some more. I want to go back and watch some of these videos some more too. So, uh, but please watch and share this live and. Uh, I think that it's important that people understand that this is what it looks like when you uh, a culture change. We have to have yeah. a culture change in the city, and yeah. uh, people should know that 
when these holidays come up, when these days come up, people are going to come out and protest against them because uh, these days are uh, propping up things that are negative. Uh, right. You know, uh, Thomas Jefferson is not a man that uh, needs to be celebrated. Uh, the uh, you know, the, these men that are being celebrated are bigots, are... Uh, and again, people. Some people say, "Well, they, they were men of their time," and uh, okay, that's that's fine. Well, you know, we don't. It's nothing. It's not no law or no rule that says we have to uh, go back and 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 idolize these men or or change history or rewrite history uh, so that way these men can have uh, some type of some type of uh, foothold in the history books of now. Uh, we can uh, take I don't think that the story of Thomas Jefferson needs to be erased. I think that that people should know what Thomas Jefferson did. I think it's power in knowing what Thomas Jefferson did. Uh, but I think that uh, there's no power in celebrating what Thomas Jefferson did unless you are a person who uh, gets to do the same things that Thomas Jefferson does or did. Uh, and so, again, it, uh, I, we're going to wrap it up here Uh do some more lives tomorrow. Please just go back and watch all the videos from the last uh, 48 hours, excuse, the last 36 hours or so out here at the occupation. Uh, tomorrow is Monday. People are off of work. So I, I anticipate that we will continue to have a little bit of craziness down here. Uh, did you have something that you want to say to uh, wrap this up at I the did, end? I did. Uh, I don't want, I don't want to open up a topic, but I want people that are watching live and people that are watching this repeatedly. Google, What's happening in Canada? Because this is this is monumental. What he's talking about, the founding fathers, they have to date fifteen hundred children's uh, recorded and indi indi indigenous children that they've found fifteen hundred unmarked graves, mass graves of children. They've they, they've documented an estimated number fifteen hundred. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is just please Google this. They're reporting in Canada right now. They were marching in Canada today to show you the opposite of, a, of here. People are fighting for the national pride and national identity. The, the indigenous people in Canada are really acknowledging how deep the atrocity of extermination is. See, we Americans just flippantly say, well, yeah, you know, they, they is mass genocide. They're seeing for themselves the bones and the bodies but they're seeing how recent this was. And the reason why I wanted to bring this up in closing for today, food for thought, they're saying this is only the tip of the iceberg. They, uh, they are expecting and anticipating for Canada alone to see thousands of bodies, thousands of indigenous children that were put in these quote-unquote schools. And the Catholic Church was fully aware of what was going on and participated. These are facts. Look this up. What what gave me chills, what gave me chills to my core, they said, this is just Canada, but wait until they expose it in America. Wait till they expose the same genocide of the indigenous people and the depth of it in America. That's just food for thought for the 4th of July. And then we're going to wrap this up like how we uh, usually wrap up the lives with uh, justice for Logan Bell, justice for Carrie Blake. Uh, justice for Jovan Fresco, justice for Gino Washington, uh, justice for Demetrius Bennett, uh, justice for Mark Barmore, justice for Philip Johnson, justice for Suzette Babbler, justice for Jasper Banks, uh, justice for Lil Mike Sago, justice for Mikey Guzman, uh, justice for Shannon Graves, justice for Faustin Guaitigo, uh, justice for Joseph McCormick, and justice for Eddie Patterson. Uh, if you're watching this video, share this video. We outside.